question. All yours. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Krista from Faber-Castell, and tonight we have Lay Ralston, who is I Am Mommy Lay on all of her social channels. She will be leading us through a Valentine's card making activity tonight. So welcome, Lay. Thank you for leading this activity. Also, um, I'm going to go ahead and post the worksheet for tonight in the chat. So if you don't have that already, the link will be in the first message of the chat. So Lay, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Krista. Thank you again, Faber-Castell, for having me. And thank you, Michaels, for having me again. Hello, hello, everyone. All right. OK, so today is going to be fun. I'm really excited about this um, workshop. And I'm going to try not to talk a whole lot and try not to go too fast. Um, but please do let me know in the chat section if I am <laughs> talking a little too fast or if I'm drawing a little too fast. Um, can you believe that Valentine's Day is just right around the corner? It seems like it was just yesterday. We were working on some Christmas um, projects and, and crafts, um, but today we are going to be focusing on a lot of pinks and reds um, and a lot of Valentine uh, doodles. Like what Krista said, um, the worksheet is going to be available in the chat section if you have failed to download that, you can download it and then um, you can print it at home. This is going to be um, here in front of me, um, but we're also going to be doing a lot of stuff that is not going to be in the worksheet today because I have a lot of ideas in my head that we can do together. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some fun Valentine projects. You know, this can either be used in a card, you can do this in a tag or just a letter. Or if you are doing journaling, like bullet journals and all that, this can definitely be a project to do in your bullet journals as well for like cover pages and all that. But basically what we're going to try and cover is doodling and a little bit of creative lettering today. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of you in the chat room. Someone's from Missouri. Um, my name is Leigh. <laughs> I didn't get to say that. My name is Leigh and I am broadcasting live from Northwest Arkansas area. And I'm so happy that you're here with me today. So um, if we're ready, if we can just put the camera in the overhead. Thank you so very much. Hello there from Colorado. Hello everyone. Good evening. Okay, so this is the worksheet that I've prepared for this workshop. And one, one second. Okay, so as you can see, there's a step by step that you can follow along how to create the card. And it's a very easy card that you can definitely do at home. Um, but we are going to skip on this one. I'm going to go on the second page. And on the second page, you're going to see the word Valentine. And here we did the Valentine in a script or a brush lettering type. And then we did a little bit of combination here. So will you be mine forever? The words, I love you. And then happy Valentine's Day, because we're doing something for Valentine's. And then I showed you a step-by-step -step how to create the florals that I did in the cards, and then um, another style of flower also. And then the third page of that worksheet, you're gonna find the word Valentine again. And then just a little tip of how to use your brush pens. Okay, and then what you can do on this one is that you can get a tracing paper if you'd like, and then put it on top of that, and then you can trace along, okay? But what we're gonna do, I have just a blank piece of paper here and we're going to start the workshop. I will be using my Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens. Let's talk just a little bit about these pens, okay? So I'm gonna grab just a few of different nibs, okay? So the Faber Castell, the Pit Artist, comes in with many different types of nibs. And with that, you can create many styles of lines or stroke. So I'm going to start with the extra small. I'm just going to show you real quick. So I'm just scribbling here. 
that's the extra small. I don't have the whole, I, think, I don't think I do have all the different pens in here. So that's the extra small. This one has the small tip. So I don't have the fine here, but it's okay. Let me just zoom in just a little bit. Let's see, there we go. Okay, now this one is the medium. I just kind of grab the ones that I think I'm going to use today. All right. And then I have the 1.5. You notice it's much thicker, right? The reason why I'm showing you this is because doodles and lettering and choosing that right pen, I always get asked this question. Hey, Lay, what kind of pen should I use? Um, um, you know, what kind of tips, um, the nib? Uh, and that's the usual question. And it's very hard for me to answer that because really it's it's a personal preference. This one is the brush. As you can see, this is my favorite, the brush. And then I have to say the small and the brush is my favorite. The reason why I love the brush a lot is that I can get the thin lines that I can probably be just slightly thicker than the medium. I go light. And then if I apply a little pressure, see that? I can get the thick line too. So I can have a variety of lines just by the pressure that I apply into the pen. See, pretty fun, huh? All right, and then the last one that I'd like to show you is going to be this, the soft brush. Now the soft brush will work, you know, very much like the brush, but as the word soft, this one, the nib of the pen is going to be much softer. So it's much more flexible. Some would rather prefer the soft brush because they can probably get much thinner line or a much thicker line with lots of ease. But then the reason why I said it's personal preference, because we all have different types of pressure, the way we write. Um, I personally, I do write really heavy. And if I use a soft brush, I feel like I don't have much control. But if you feel like you have, you have light hand, um, I think you will love the soft brush um, because I also love the texture that it creates. But it's just that I'm having a little bit of hard time controlling that pen. So I'm just gonna stick with a brush. Okay, so for the doodling, I am going to be using the small tip and then maybe the 1.5. I'll just set this on the side and then grab them if I feel like my drawings will need it. Okay, I wanna start this workshop with some drills. This is really important. When um, people ask me about doodling, because we're going to focus on drawing today and a little bit of lettering. Um, I've done some few workshops in the past that we were talking about lettering, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a bit more than that. So always check the website if we have some workshops coming up. Okay, so for the doodling, I really want to say this to you that we have to simplify everything we know about drawing because that is the first step for you to be open to the idea of I am going to draw because sometimes it's, it's, it's a little um, overwhelming because I can hear you from there, <laughs> wherever you're at, and you're saying, I don't know how to draw. I can't draw. I am not an artist. Um, and it's okay because doodles, doodles are just simple. You know, everything's going to be simplified. All right. So grab your pen. Whatever pen you have, if you have a pencil, you know, um, grab it. And then we're going to do a little bit of drills first. And this is really important. Even before I sat here, I was actually doing a little bit of drills. And this is just to get your hands relaxed, what we want it to be relaxed. So we're just going to do squiggly lines. Okay. One of the comments I always get to is like, I can't even draw a straight line. I can't too, <laughs> without a ruler. No, sometimes I can't straight, not perfect. Okay, so that's a squiggly line. Now let's do just, um, just 
There we go. Let's do it vertically. Okay. Now let's do some horizontal, just little dashes like this. Okay. Now we do diagonal. Other way. I'm using a small tip, by the way, right now. And then this one, we did the squiggly. Now let's do gallop. So like a half circle. And then let's do the other way around. Okay. Notice how relaxed you're already feeling just by drawing these simple lines like this, right? Let's let's try that again. I think I feel like I need more help with my circle. <laughs> They're not always circle. There we go. All right, I want to do, now we did this quickly. I want to do a little bit of a wave. So much wider like this. All right. I don't want to do like this. Same ones. The reason why I want you to get yourself familiar with these different lines, because doodling is really all about simple lines. Sometimes, um, when we look at the big picture, we look at the whole image, sometimes it's a little scary because we see all these different um, lines and shapes, but really it's all about combining all these shapes together that we're going to create such a pretty drawing. So we're going to make things very simple today, all right? And even now as I am a mommy, I still draw the same way. I like cute things. So um, whether you're a mommy or you're a little kid that's joining me today, we're going to be drawing a lot of cute or kawaii things. So we did that. Now we're going to do, how about a little longer line? Let's try to make a straight line. Okay, be mindful of how you hold your pen. You have to be comfortable with your, the way you hold your pen. You don't want it to, you don't want to strain your hand because somebody told me before that art doesn't have to hurt. So make sure you're comfortable, you're not holding it too tight, just relax it and hold, move your wrist a little bit like this. So just kind of like relax that way. And so we're gonna draw another line. Sometimes I'll give you an extra tip. When I go really slow with my line, I've noticed that it becomes more jiggly. It's like when I try so hard, it doesn't give me a much straighter line. Sometimes when I go a little faster, I notice that it's much more straight. All right. Okay. So are you feeling relaxed now? Your hands are okay. You're just, you're more comfortable holding that pen. Then we're good. Okay. So in this workshop, I've asked if you have like plain cardstock or like plain cards like this. I get, I got this one from Michaels. So this is a, I think it's called the top loading card like this, but it's just blank. It's just plain white, but it's okay if you don't have a card with you. It's okay because we can do the doodles. You can practice it first in a piece of paper. Um, and then you can just put that in a card when you're ready. All right, so, and also like what I said, you can use this in your journals. Okay, so in our worksheet, I've actually taught you guys how to do some florals, but I also have other ideas that I wanna share with you today um, because with everything that's in the worksheet, you can practice that at home without me, but uh, I wanna share some other fun drawings like flowers that you can use for this Valentine, all right? Okay, so, I love to use pencil. I love to use mechanical pencils. Um, 
I don't know why I didn't used to like it because I write heavy, but I think it's one practice that I've, that helped me a lot because knowing that my mechanical pencil can easily break. It's like I've trained myself to go really light when I'm using the pencil. So that's one way that I've trained myself to how to go light with the pressure that I apply when I'm drawing or when I'm writing. So mechanical pencil has been my best friend for quite some time now. All right. So since we did our drills with our lines and our shapes, we're going to first try and think of some doodle so that symbolizes Valentine, heart, right? We always know that heart. So how do we write heart? Heart can be drawn in so many different ways. It can be a skinny heart. That's a little skinny, skinny and tall. I think I'm gonna use my pen just so you can see it in the camera because the pencil might be too light. So I'm just gonna go over this just so we can see it. All right, so how about we draw just different hearts right now? So this is kind of tall and skinny. It's skinnier too. Sometimes it can have a little tail like that. Or like a full heart like this. So that is one thing that I love when I'm drawing is that I don't always have to do the whole shape at one time. You know how some people can just go, hmm, I'm gonna draw a heart like this. And it's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I want you to simplify things. How about if I do the left first, especially when you're just practicing? I'm gonna draw the left and then I'm going to draw the right side of my heart. Right? Let's try that again. Left. And then right. And when there's like a little gap, go in the middle of your line and then kind of like finish your stroke like that. Oops, I wasn't even on the camera. What was I doing? All right. The one I'm gonna re just do it just so you can see it. Kind of when I did my right side, it wasn't connecting. So what I did was I went and like a little bit over there, not just where I stopped the line. And then I just connected. Now, now that we have the heart shapes, what can we do? How can we make this cute? I love to write faces inside my drawings, no matter what it is like if it's a coffee cup, if it's a heart, or if it's a computer shape, or it's a ball, I always add faces. I love kawaii. So let's add faces to them. So we need two eyes. Make them a little tiny. There we go. You can definitely add flowers. And I'm going to add a really like, that's already looking cute. Now you can take it to another level. We can draw eyes that is like closed, but we're going to put lashes in them because they look so cute. And then we'll put another smile. And then another is like long lashes. I see this sometimes in the car, in like a beetle car. They have like long lashes in their car. It's super cute. Now with the mouth, notice I just did that straight line and I'm gonna do this shape. So that's going to be our little tiny mouth like that. And sometimes what I like to do with my, my mouth like that, I like to kind of do the tongue thing and then shade this part over here like that. There. So let's do that over here. Let's just shade it. Super cute. And then remember when we did that scallop shape, we can definitely add it to our heart. It's kind of like creating, adding a border. 
that's why practicing those drills are really important because look at this. It's just shapes put together that makes up the whole picture. And then you can add your smile. Now this one is really happy smile. It's a very happy face. How cute is that? That's super cute. And then once you also have a heart, you know what you can do to your heart? It's not just a simple heart anymore. We're going to turn this heart into a balloon. So I just added two diagonal lines side by side and then a straight line and then another two on those sides and then close it. And then we can do the wiggly. Remember we did the squiggly lines? And then now we have a balloon. You can again put your cute face in there. Now we have that cute balloon. It's just so much fun. This is where you have to really imagine. Imagine things, what you can do with many different shapes. All right, so those are some ideas that you can turn, put them in the tag, and then it's just going to look super cute. So here I have a tag in here. You can give it to mom, you know, have that heart with a cute little face and just add the words, I love you or happy Valentine's Day. So super duper simple. And I really, really, I would love it if my daughter gives it to me. Okay, so another idea. So we have the hearts in here. What can we add? Flowers, right? We're going to make some cute flowers. Okay, one thing that I love about Hawaii style of drawings is, is that it's very simple. It's just clean lines, very simple lines. So with a heart, Hawaii would look more like this, much rounder, a little bit on the round side. Um, whimsical drawing is more like pointy. They have like sharp corners. Um, to show you a an example of what I am saying. So if a whimsical drawing would draw an envelope, how do you draw an envelope? It's just a rectangle, right? So rectangle. And then we do a triangle. And then you can add part to make it look cute and then just shade over that. So to me, when I see this drawing, I see this as a more whimsical. I'm gonna show you the kawaii style, my favorite style. So think a little round. How can I make the envelope round? But it's rectangle. Yeah, I understand. Now, okay. So let's just draw two straight lines, one over here, and then a little one. I'm going to make this one a little shorter, just there. Now, the difference would be, instead of drawing a straight line, we're going to make just a little, with a little curve. So from here, kind of like making a letter C but a very thin letter C. This one is like making a letter D like that. And then instead of a triangle, we're kind of like making the same thing, like a little curve like that. And then you make your heart a little on the round side too. And then you can add your scallops to make it look super cute. And then if you're gonna turn this into a card, you can just simply add the words, you've got mail or special message. And then you can add your cute face. Don't forget your cute face. This is my favorite part. Cute faces. 
time I'm going to shade my whole mouth. And that is already looking so cute. But if you have your other colored markers, I'm using um, a Faber Castell, but in brush tip. You, it looks like a purse. Perfect. It actually can be a purse. All you got to do is add that. And it's a purse already. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it so cute? And I'm, you can just put in, color that in. What you can do instead of coloring in your whole envelope, or we can call it a purse too, is you just want to concentrate on your added scallops in the side just to kind of highlight that border. Or you can add your reds. Or I personally, all my drawings, if you follow me on Instagram, it's at Mommy Lay. You're going to see there that I always have these cute faces in my drawings. Then I have to have a blush. So we're going to have to have a blush on. I always want those two because they're so cute. And I love that. All right. So we're going to focus on the Hawaii style. So we did our heart, we did our purse or a little envelope, however you'd like to see that. Now we're, let's learn how to make a flower. Now whimsical, I think when you draw a flower, it's we all start with that center of the circle. And then I feel like the whimsical has a lot of petals. All right, like that. But the kawaii style would be put in your circle. And then it's limited to four or five. So as little lines as possible is what makes the kawaii style very simple looking. And then I'd like to add a little bit of that, 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 and that. They're cute. All right, so that's the flower. And then how do you add leaves in here? So go from here, there, and then I'll repeat the same process and go there. And then I'll add. So from there, you can just add this, or you can just leave it that way. And you can add your cute face again if you'd like. Super cute. All right, I'm gonna teach you another way how to make a flower. Actually, we're going to do another one after this because I love drawing flowers because you can use it for a lot of different occasions. It doesn't just have to be Valentine's Day. You can create a birthday card just creating flowers. So, okay. So earlier when we were doing our drills, we were practicing different lines. How was a spiral? Can we do that again? Let's try that again. So you'll just create a spiral like this, All right? And then this time, we're gonna draw a letter U. And then we're gonna draw those scallops. And then we're just going to add lines like this. You know how when we did our heart, we can't do heart. And then like that. Super fun and simple. I'm going to do it again. So we did a spiral like this. And then we did a letter U. And then we did the scallop, kind of like half circles. I can just do this, add those lines, and add a heart. that so we can add some leaves like that. 
That's super cute. See? How did yours turn out? All right, now another way. Hmm. Let us draw a letter U. Right? So from here, the style that we did here earlier, those three scallop things, we're going to repeat the same thing over here. So one, two, three. Right? And then we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three. So you have three scalloped or half circles too. And then this time, instead of doing our lines over here, I'm gonna do it on the top, right? So we're gonna do my lines. We're just connecting them like this. Like that. Here we go. And then now, I'm just gonna add those little lines over there, kind of like curved lines. And then you can add your heart shape again. Another heart in there. Super cute. And then what you can do is you can fill in the inside with a little bit of different patterns. You can add like circles, small circle, spread them apart so they're not so close. Be mindful of your spaces. About that and about. And we have a cute flower. Let me just add the thing. You're drawing a little big, you might want to add another one like that. Close this in. Then we can add another lead. This time I'm going to make it a little bigger. Curved. Here we go. So as you see, those drills are important because all of them are just kind of like we're using the same strokes over and over. We did a lot of curved lines like this. You know, we did a lot of like half circles or letter U's or letter C's. Like this. And we did a lot of circles like that. And then we did lines and diagonal lines. We did like a little bit of squiggly things. So it's just very important to get yourself relaxed first and then let your hands be comfortable and practice your drills when you're doing um, kawaii things. And the most important thing of all is don't overwhelm yourself. Um, just think of it, think, think of all the drawings as lines, line per line per line per line. Okay, so we did, look at that. We have three different roses. Now, if you want to have like a little bit of a grown up more floral or rose, this is the way I really like to do it. So we're going to do almost the same strokes. We're going to do like C's, but in bigger, different sizes. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's kind of like you start with this enclosed letter C, and I'm going to close it in with another letter C, the bigger one. And then I'm going to make another C or half circle. And then from there, I'm going to draw another C. And then another one. So we're just going to repeat the same process. The wider your letter C's are, so these are your petals, the more open your flower is. So we add another C. Now the key to this drawing is to know when to stop. <laughs> Sometimes I just keep going and going and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a very big flower now. So just kind of like when you're happy with your flower, 
stop there. Okay. And then so now, um, sometimes I like to leave it just like that. Okay, let's, I want to add a little bit here. I feel like here it's not balanced. All right, sometimes I will leave it just open like this. Or sometimes I really um, like to add um, patterns in my drawings. So I would add like just small um, circles, really irregular shape of circles, but just like that. And then you can add your um, leaves too. With this style of flower, I love to have like big leaves. So you're gonna do your curve line again. Another curve line like that. And then that line in the middle. And then let's add diagonal lines. Like that. Like this to my leaves. And then you can add a much smaller leaves, curve line, curve line, same process. And I'll do my diagonal lines, or you could call this a letter V too. See, we're just drawing letter V. And then you have that leaves. Super pretty. That's super pretty. I like it. And then you can color it in with your markers. Let's color it in so it's pretty. So if you want to do a smaller rose, what you can do is you're just going to have to make your letter C's or your strokes or your lines much smaller. We'll try that one. Let me just get these colored. All right, how did yours turn out? When you're coloring, make sure you go one stroke, just one stroke. You don't wanna do like this and then go like that. So if you're going this way, you want to be consistent with your strokes and then just make sure that it goes that way. So I'm going this way. I'll make sure that all my strokes go this way. Sometimes I just go fill in those little bit of gaps in between and that's okay. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, because I think um, what we do is we try to make things super complicated in our head because the way we look at a picture and a rose, when we look at a rose, it just seems super, wow, that is so hard. I can never do that. But <laughs> in reality, it's just really, it's just very simple. We just have to simplify things. Okay. So um, I'm leave that open. Okay, so somebody asked if we can do the smaller rows. Yes, we can. So basically, I started with much bigger um, C. So what I want to do now is we're just going to do, so we're just going to start much smaller. So everything will just have to be smaller. And a fewer petals will give you the impression of a smaller rows. I'm just closing it in now already. So you can just keep it that way. And then you can just add your leaves that way. Now you have a smaller flower. <laughs> That's so cute too, right? I love it. I love the roses too. All right. So now we can actually do something with these roses. What we're gonna do, I want you to try this one. I did it yesterday on my Instagram, but it was too fast, you know, those hyperlapse videos. This time we're gonna go step by step because this is going to be fun to use in your cards or your tags or in your journals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a wide U. So this one we, with our flowers here, we kind of did a little tight U 
this time, something similar to this, but not so deep, okay? So we're going to show you what I'm saying. There. Think of it as a smile. It's not too big of a smile. <laughs> so just like that. No, it doesn't. It's not embarrassing. Just keep practicing. All right, so we have that one. Now we're gonna add those roses that we've learned to do. So we're gonna start small. So this one's gonna have much limited number of petals because it's going to be a bouquet. So we start with their letter C. So just keep doing your letter C. That way, that way. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. And I'm going to add another one here. So it's just letter C. Not wet. Call that done too. So we'll just keep adding flowers here, okay? All right. So do the same thing. So they're just letter C's. And I'll do the same thing over here. So when you're drawing a much smaller scale, sometimes Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because you feel like you're just creating a mess. <laughs> but just keep going anyways. Because what's important is that knowing that you are not married to this idea, you're not stuck with anything. This is going to depend on your imagination. So I think I'm going to stop here. This is the key is knowing when to stop. All right. So that, that doesn't look like much. And it's okay. We're going to go finish this one. All right. So remember when we did our leaves over here, we did kind of like a curved line. So we're going to do the same thing like that. And then go in the middle, stop in the middle of your drawing. And then repeat the same, pro so the same process, kind of like a diagonal. And I'm going to go stay over there in the middle. All right. All right. So now from here, I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. We're not going to go close it all the way. We're just going to stay over there. So you, whatever feels comfortable. This is the key also is that whatever feels most comfortable to you. If you feel like you're much more comfortable going down, I mean, top to the bottom or from the bottom to the top, do that, okay? So you, whatever feel like you will get the most straight line. So I personally feel like it's more natural for me to go up to down than up to, <laughs> I'm confusing myself. It feels more natural for me to go from up to down rather than down to up. Yeah, that was a lot, okay. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to go over here. See, I made a boo-boo because I didn't curve my line. See, what should have been done is I should have followed the curve of this one. But it's okay. Now this time I'm going to go follow along the curve of this little, that one. So from here where the line ended, I just went over here and then closed it over there. Now this time, another diagonal. This time we're gonna go to the top. Stop where this ends, the middle, and then do the same thing again. There we go. And then you can add a bow, another letter C. So you did a letter O, and then we're going to do a, a letter C backwards. And then we're going to do that as a bow, All right? 
can do this. I'm going to show you a much bigger bow so you can do it. So circle, a letter C, So it wasn't really in the middle of my circle. So a little bit to the left. So think of this as this is the middle of your circle, right? So you kind of went a little bit on that side, not exactly in the middle, but you can do in the middle if you'd like and see what it looks like. You can do that. So there's a little wonky, but that's okay. And then I'll just show you real quick how to do the tail of your bow. So kind of like a little curve like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing thin from the top because kind of like think of it you're everything squeezed in the top size so it's much smaller here and then it's going to go wide like that and then do the same thing like that curved lines and that way so this time we're just making letter v And then you have a bow. All right, so I'm gonna do it over here now. I just wanted to show it to you big. All right. And then you can just add. Okay. I would make it cute again and I will add my cute face over here. There we go. And then so if you're doing this in your um, journal or you're doing your project already in a card, then make sure to color it the inside so it looks much, much prettier. And I'm going to add my blush on because she looks much prettier with the blush. <laughs> so that's super cute. Okay, so I want us to create, I'm going to create a card over here. So I have my top loading card. Okay, let me just zoom out real quick. So basically we, we learned how to draw many different types of drawings. You can draw the florals, again, not just for, you know, Valentine. You can do that for birthdays or just, you know, just because card, especially now with, um, you know, we can't really go anywhere it's nice to send cards you know i know that <laughs> now the generation is all about computers and text messages and emails i personally love it when i receive cards in the mail it's just i don't know it's so much special and what makes it even better for me is that when it's handmade i don't care if it doesn't look as perfect as those you know perfect cards that, that you can buy from the sh store I feel like it's even more special when it's like handmade. All right, so I want us to make something. This is going to be really fun. Um, I was looking at words or puns to use for Valentine. And one thing that I really wanted to use is no bunny but you. But we're gonna have to learn how to draw a bunny before we can do this card. So no bunny but you, how do we make a bunny? All right, let's do this. We're going to practice the bunny first before I actually draw it in my card. Hey, okay. oh, a bunny. How are you going to do a bunny? Now let's practice first our um, circles. Actually, this one, it's going to be a more um, oval. So you can do it a circle like this, much more rounder. It's going to be up to you. But so think of your the face of your bunny first. Right, so it's like, do I want it um, like this? Do I want it like this? So we're we're really going to make this simple, guys. Okay, I'm gonna move this real quick. All right, I think I am going to make my bunny really cute because we're gonna draw some kawaii bunny. So I'm gonna draw. Hmm, so an oval shape like that. So that's going to be my face. You have a bunny head? I am jealous, Megan. I wanted a bunny. 
I have a little secret to share with all of you. I call my daughter Rain Bunny. She's my little bunny. All right. So now, what is the difference from, let's say, if you're drawing a bear and a bunny? Let's draw another oval shape in here. Now, if you want to draw a bear, because you can say, I love you very much, the difference would be their ears. See, I just did a half circle over here for another letter C. And then I'm going to draw another one over here for its ear, like that. Now with the bunny, you're gonna make it long, okay? So there, that's your bunny ear. From here, And then like what we did over here, we're gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna kind of copy the shape we did over here, but we're not gonna put it all the way to the top, kind of like in the middle. So that way. And then this one, go over here and then go that way. All right. So, okay. So now we have this bear and then this one. Now, how are we gonna draw their faces? They have to be really happy, right? So I'm going to draw I just two eyes. And I'm going to just repeat the same process. Like two big dots. All right. And then I am going to draw a nose. You can just draw a little button nose like that. You know how the shape that we did over here, kind of like the oval shape, but we're just gonna create a miniature version of that oval shape over there to create that nose. We're gonna do the same thing to the bear. There we go. There. And then now this is going to be the difference. You can add this in both your bear and your bunny. With the bunny, I'm just gonna draw a letter U like this. And then I'm gonna draw a big front tooth. See, super cute. But with the bear, I'm gonna draw two U's. This, and then another one. And then one. And then you can create a little tongue sticking out too. And that's gonna make it super cute. I love it. And then you can just add the bow that we've practiced earlier. With my characters, when I create characters, I always add bows in them. It's either bows or little tiny flowers. How about let's add a flower to our bear. Remember the kawaii style. Limit your flower to a four or five petals. But again, there's really no rules. <laughs> Absolutely, you can always do your own. This is the thing about art is that these are just samples of how I would create mine, but it's always up to you. It's up to your imagination. I'm gonna show you something. I created a character of a bunny and I call it Bay. And the way I would draw my Bay is that I would draw a little, Shape like this. Remember, we did kind of like um, a letter C or a half circle. This time I did this like that. This way. And then you can draw the ears like how I did mine. They kind of loop around like this, like that. And then I would repeat the same process, but on the other side. This way. Okay, I imagine that this is where her ears are. I'm just gonna put it that way. And then I still would add a little bit here. Copy the same thing that way. And then I'm gonna add 
some eyebrows. I like to make her lashes really long. And then I add the cute button nose. And then I add a big blush over there on her cheek. And then I add her bow. So really, it's up to you how you're going to make your bunny. We can all make, like, if you want it a little bit round bunny. So you create your shapes. And this is a great practice, actually. Hey, you know what? I want my bunny ears to loop. How can I make it loop? So kind of like little squiggly things like that. You repeat the same thing over there. And then you make the eyes much bigger. And so this is a great practice. You start with different shapes and then you kind of just pull things together. I'm gonna add my bow in the middle instead of the side. And then still I'm gonna add some lashes in there. And then I'm gonna add can also look like a little puppy. <laughs> so as you can see, you can always create so much like different things, all right? So I'm just gonna go before I say goodbye, let's finish one card, all right, together. So I have my white card over here and I'm still using the same marker. This is the small tip. And then I want the no bunny but you. But this time, since it's in a card, I wanna use my pencil first. I want to work on the letters first. So let's say no. I want to say there's no bunny like you. So letter T. Okay. So I imagine that my bunny is going to be here and then the letter, the words no is here. So that's how you would compose something is that you imagine, you visualize where you want your letters and your drawings. But at the same time, if you're using a pencil, it's going to be much better because you can always erase. All right, so I am just gonna draw my bunny first. I kind of want my bunny to be like the cute oval shape that we did earlier. And then I want her ears to kind of like overlap. So I want it to have a really, really big ear. And I want it all to go facing over here. Like those are big ears. <laughs> and then I'm gonna draw like that. And I'm going to draw that button nose and then that. And then I'm going to draw a flower over here. There we go. All right, so there's, and then I'm going to do the no. No. Bunny. And then the word but, and then my word you over here. So I kind of like putting it in my head, all right? So no bunny but you. So we're gonna use the word letter B, U, T, and the U. I'm not gonna finish that yet. Okay, the no bunny but you. Then I'm gonna draw a little heart over here. See, this is gonna be such a cute card already. So I'm just gonna go over my lines. And this time, I'm gonna go really careful. Sometimes I'm really terrible at going 
low with my line art, but it's very important to slow down. Because with everything, with project, with school, with lives, you know, everything has to be one step at a time, right? We did our sketch. We practiced the drawings first, you know. No, all right. So this time, since I have that flower on top, I'm going to draw the flower first because think of it this way. This is the one on top. So I don't want my, my lines to overlap everything. So we're going to do our flower. All right. This is sometimes I'm really bad at lining, especially if I can't do the whole shape and I have to kind of like connecting the dots. Sometimes I mess up, but it's okay. I have to be kind to myself because, you know, no one's perfect. Ooh, that's kind of okay. We're going to do our ears. That way. There we go. There we go. I'm going to add my lashes. I'm going to draw a button nose. All right. Letter T. Letter O. My letter U. I'm going to finish up with my little heart. All right. What I can do here is I just erase all those sketches that I did so just kind of go over when you're doing your um erasing think light don't be don't go crazy so apply just light pressure because but these markers are so amazing that's why I love them because um the lines always stay perfect even though sometimes I have really heavy hands, so they kind of go crazy, but my lines remain sharp and crisp and it's just perfect. All right, this time I don't want to color in my whole bunny, but I want her to look like she's white. So trick, if you're going to do this, if you're coloring anything white, because there's really no color white, what I love to do is I love to use um, light, blue color marker or um, sometimes a very light gray but the light blue and I'm just going to create like a border just go around my drawing like this and somehow this blue border like this blue line that we're creating somehow it creates an illusion it tells her eye that that image or that picture is white. So that's what the blue border helps. I'm just going to go over the side. Just go really light like that. There we go. And then I'm going to add pink and that flower. way. And I'm going to add this pink to the cute button nose. I'm going to color in my heart pink as well. And a little blush. We have a card. There's no bunny but you.
there you go. There you have it. It's super simple. So everything that we've learned today um, with all the different shapes that we've created, practice your drills. That's super duper important. Um, the different shapes would be, you know, the squiggly lines, the um, straight lines, diagonal letter U's, um, kind of curved lines and all those little tiny shapes. Remember that all these drawings are just simple shapes, simple lines and strokes that were put together to create that whole big picture. So simplify things when you're doing doodles, don't overthink so much, just kind of think of them as many different lines that you're just going to put them together, kind of like puzzles. So whether you're doing your journaling or you have your notebooks, um, or I hope that you make cards this Valentine, um, handmade cards are always super special. But again, my name is Mommy Lay. If you're not following me on Instagram, uh, you can follow me there at Mommy Lay and you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and also don't forget to follow Faber Castell on Instagram and all over social media as well. I want to thank you all for spending time with me this evening. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I had so much fun. Um, heads up, we have a, another workshop coming up with Michaels also. So make sure to check back on the website and to register for that workshop as well. Thank you again, Krista. Thank you, Faber Castell family and Michaels for this fun workshop. Always, always stay creative and stay happy. Thank you. Thank you, Leigh. Good night, everyone. <laughs>